Hello, I'm David DeCoswell. Welcome to ECTV Live. I'm joined, as usual, by my co-host, Rusty Fender. Hey, good to Rusty, see you, Dave. Welcome. Good to see you. One of our regulars back with us, Bernie Hi, McGrew, Bernie. from the Lackawanna River Conservation yeah. Yeah. Association. Yeah, David, Rusty, last uh, week. glad yes. to be back with you guys. Uh, good to have you. Always, well, and of course, yeah. this time of year, I especially like to have you. There's a, a million things to talk about, but the, mm -hmm. the focus is always on the annual River Fest. River Fest is, is what's the date this Saturday, year? May the 11th, the day before Mother's Day. Mother's Hopefully day a little weekend. weather yeah. a little better than last year with the rain last yeah, year. Yeah, we've had a couple rain yes, years, so we are hoping for sunshine this year. We've got a lot of activities lined up. Yeah. yeah, and, and uh, I remember when we first brought you in here, one of the reasons I really wanted to have you was because over the years I did so many stories on negative stories about our rivers, mm -hmm. the Lackawanna and the Susquehanna and the mm -hmm. problems with this and acid mine Pollution, drainage and, yes. and uh, 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 litter, uh, these sorts of things. Mm -hmm. And your organization from the start has been making a very conscious effort to look at our our aquatic uh, uh, our rivers, our streams, mm -hmm. uh, as a mm -hmm. positive thing sure. and not as a negative yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. So Riverfest really celebrates that positive nature. How, well, how many years has Riverfest been going on? We've been conducting Riverfest in uh, 30, about 30 years. Yeah, we took it over. Uh, actually, it started out as a canoe and kayak race called Canoeathon. Back in 1973, mm -hmm. there was a group, uh, uh, the JCs, uh, teamed up with uh, an early environmental group called uh, LULAC, the Lackawanna, Luzerne oh, Lackawanna I mean, Environmental Council. Remember it well, yes. yes. And uh, they, they, uh, 1973 was the first year the Lackawanna River was safe enough for water contact sport. So I, you ironically, the year after the Agnes flood. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was the year. But the year, the the the, the years preceding that. Uh, the city of Scranton developed its uh, yeah, the sewage sanitary treatment, came online. treatment yeah. works in, in 1966 yep. and 68 in Scranton. And then by 73, Lackawanna County had uh, uh, worked with the Up Valley municipalities to create Lackawanna River Basin Sanitary Sewer Authority. And uh, they got everybody from uh, Troop and Dixon up to uh, Carbondale and Forest City. So there was no longer that, that contamination going in the river for the first time and it was safe enough so we could you know people could actually come out and enjoy the river now we still have mine drainage we still have a lot of silt and sedimentation from all the abandoned mine lands and then the streets that don't get swept properly but uh we, we we've got a much a much cleaner river than we did uh, 40 50 years ago and uh it's it's getting better all the time and there's more people getting out to enjoy it and that's what you want, is yeah, to have that's people definitely look it. at it yeah. that way. Yeah. You also, prior to River Fest every year, have an annual cleanup of yeah. the river. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken, while there's still any, any debris, any trash dumped in the river is, is bad. Yeah. But I mm -hmm. don't think you're pulling out what you did years ago. No, a lot, a lot less. There's, a, there's a lot less metal in the river because the price of metal is up, and a lot of people are <laughs> out salvaging. Yeah, so right. they see an old bicycle or an old shopping cart uh, or an old water heater, psh, it's gone. Yeah. Uh, the kitchen sink, if it's metal, it's, it's not there anymore. Uh, but we still have, uh, we still have tires. They're a big problem, and uh, just all of the litter. We're, a, we're a throwaway society guys and in the the plastic litter in pennsylvania and all over the world Everywhere. really yeah. but just here because our experience is here is is phenomenal plastic shopping bags uh plastic straws uh styrofoam coffee cups styrofoam food food containers uh plastic plastic uh, water bottles uh soda bottles uh in uh, in uh, uh it, it's it's it, everywhere and, and it doesn't break down. So, I mean, gradually, like if there's plastic bags out there, they'll go caught in the trees and the shrubs along the river and they'll get shredded over time. But you look at it and there's a beautiful scene and then, oh, what's that white thing over there? Oh, it's a plastic yeah. trash bag. Yeah. So, um, and you don't see as much of it in Europe. No, no, no they, they've, uh, got, no, they've got don't. more controls on it. They're, they're, you know, <clears> and, um, you know, I'd, I'd just like to comment, there's several bills that have been introduced in our Pennsylvania legislature uh, to restrict and, and, and control the amounts of disposable plastic in the marketplace. Uh, the plastic bags, uh, drinking straws, which are really insidious, they're a threat to wildlife. Well, they're starting uh, to disappear. Yeah, yeah the, rings, the, the rings on yeah. six packs, yeah. the six pack yeah. plastic rings that hold the beer cans yeah. together. Yeah. Yeah. Animals get them, That's get caught in them. Um, so 
we're, we're, we're really supporting and encouraging people not to use plastic, to reduce plastic. And, and even here in, in with our uh, all the great recycling that we do in the Lackawanna County, we have problems because the homeowners, everybody wants to get all the plastic recycled, but now the plastic markets have been so influenced by global trade issues, uh, China is not taking all the waste plastic that it used to, our Lackawanna County Recycling Center is backed up. And some of the stuff, now people have to pay attention. And there was an article in the paper that my recycling in Scranton was a, a day late because they needed to go. And we had four trucks that were rejected because there was contaminated plastics that had came to go to the out. landfill with those. So, yeah. 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 So uh, uh, to help out our recycling center, we, you know, at the LRCA, we're very involved in, in, in waste management in the county. And we encourage people to uh, uh, pay attention to what can and can't go in our recycling containers. Bottles, glass bottles, cans. Uh, 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 take the lids off jars, they can't go. But uh, tin cans, beer cans, aluminum cans, uh, uh, plastic soda bottles, milk bottles, uh, they can go, uh, and cardboard and paper. Uh, in, in some places collected separately or it's in separate cans. So uh, just, just be real careful, but the, the food cans, uh, the, uh, the, deli, uh, the, the deli canisters, they can't go anymore. So just, uh, just a little bit on you that. You've got to develop a mindset, back to the river. too, that yeah. you can't just drive around the highway and, and toss out your, your uh, hamburger paper and your, yeah. and your plastic water yeah. Yeah. along the side of the road. Yeah. And it, it makes the yeah. area look Terrible. And a lot of losing sure lottery does. tickets too. I, I yeah. Think, yeah. Maybe we could get if we get if we get a deposit on beverage containers. Maybe we need a deposit on on, on lottery tickets too. Actually, you, know, you know, you can tell how much garbage is on the street, especially after winter, because all the parking lots and streets are plowed, and all the residual garbage and litter is yeah. all into this place where the huge snow pile is. Right. When that melts, you can see what was in those gutters yeah. for the last six yeah. months. Yeah. Along with uh, uh, Rusty, a lot of the uh, anti-skid material. Absolutely. Uh, the sediment load that comes out of our towns here because we don't have proper uh, uh, municipal services. A lot of the towns, they just don't, they, they, it's, it's tough for a small borough to run a street sweeper. I mean, it's a it heavy, is. it's a big it piece is. of equipment. So a lot of them gave up on it. And there's no street sweeping. Scranton has one street sweeper. They just got a grant recently. They're getting two more. Uh, but I, I, I tell people, we've got some of the dirtiest streets this side of Tijuana, Absolutely. Mexico. Absolutely. <laughs> And, and we've got to do a much better job. And some of what we're involved in with the communities is encouraging, and, and Scranton's really taken the lead on this, is looking at its stormwater requirements. Uh, there's, a, there's a new set of requirements, and uh, you know, people have heard there's been some news stories lately. Wyoming Valley uh, Sanitary Authority took a big step, and they, they brought all of their constituent municipalities together, and they have taken the responsibility for all the stormwater management under the Clean Water Act that we, Congress, passed in 1972 to say, Americans, we're going to take care of cleaning our water. And it's not just the big industries. It's not just the municipalities with the sewer plants. It's everybody. The, the litter that we were just yeah. talking about, the grit that goes on the street, uh, taking Fido for a walk when you get home from work. Here's the funny part about Managing it. all that. I didn't know this until I got with PennDOT, but PennDOT will sweep a PennDOT highway in your municipality if it's a state mm -hmm. road, an SR, state mm -hmm. route, once a year. If you have your own street sweeping equipment like Pittston does, they will actually, PennDOT will pay them mm -hmm. for what it costs in one week oh. to sweep that state route, Kennedy Boulevard, Main Street, yeah. mm -hmm. Fort Jenkins Bridge, which yeah. is US 11. Mm -hmm. And they'll do that with a local town. If you can do your own local town and hire mm -hmm. someone, they will pay mm -hmm. you market price. PennDOT will pay you back. The Jessops and the Peckvilles and the yeah. Duryeas and whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a lot of towns will not take advantage of that, yeah. even to get the money back and even yeah, kind of make and, money and, on and, that and deal. Because it's, it's, it's a lot of paperwork. It is. You know? It is. A, so it's a lot of paperwork. One, one, one of the, the big thing that we're advocating is what, what Wyoming Valley did. They already had an existing sanitary authority, and that assumed the jurisdiction for all of the stormwater, because that all has to be permitted now. And each individual municipality, do we want to have like 40,000 different permits or do we want to have, you know, 10? Uh, so we're looking at creating, Lackawanna County has 24 municipalities that have to get permits for their stormwater. Why don't we just get one? Just pull it all into one agency, give the boroughs and the townships, give that authority to, to, to a, a new stormwater authority, and then that agency can look at maintaining all the streams, maintaining all the streets, maintaining all the paperwork that is needed 
to, to do that, getting equipment so a lot street sweepers, that way, sure. then they'll have, they'll have professional engineers on staff, they'll have technicians that are trained on staff, they'll be able to get the permits. Now we'll be paying a new fee for it, nobody likes to pay a fee, but for you know, 30 to 50 to 60 to 100 dollars a year, and for the business it's going to be a little bit more, but there'll be credit programs that we can work on and redesigning parking lots and things like that over the next 20 years that can reduce those costs and get everybody proactively involved. But what we can do is we'll have a, a, a one agency that has the, the professional and financial capacity to, to match bigger federal and state funding sources. So we could get money in here on the, from the federal government, from the Bureau of Mine Reclamation to fix all of our creeks. We'd have a strong partner with the local stormwater agency because they need to reduce sediment. One great way to reduce sediment is to fix all the creeks that have been damaged by 100 years of coal mining. The mining reclamation funds could come in to do some of that, but not all of it because there's such a backlog across the country. Too much. We yeah. could match that. <clears throat> and we could do more programs and then some of these dysfunctional streams are also preventing new developments from occurring. Uh, there was a development in Scranton uh, 10 or 12 years ago, a KOZ development, and they, they, they did all their paperwork, they did all their engineering and their stormwater basin was designed the way it's supposed to, but it went into a dysfunctional uh, culvert system on a creek that once existed <laughs> And it caused a whole bunch of flooding problems. It wasn't the fault of the developer. They got sued. They went out of business. But sort the, of problem, the problem the is, end. yeah, the problem's <laughs> still there. So we could solve so many problems with, the, with this new agency. So we're really, we're really asking people to take, take a good look at it uh, and, and not to think it's, it's, it's another layer of government because actually it's eliminating 24 different governmental responsibilities and bringing effort, it all yeah. together where it could be managed. And it can be, we can hold everybody's feet to the fire, it could be much more accountable because it's all going to be computerized, it's all going to be functional so that it meets the permit requirements, it could be inspected by somebody from Harrisburg, somebody from Washington. So you can't hide anything when you're doing that. And, um, and, and all this would certainly add to the quality of life, the quality of our waterway, but you mm -hmm. say that right now our water quality is not so bad. On, on most days, yeah, it's very okay. good. Yeah, we have so, a, we have a great uh, trout fishery in the river. So river fest, uh, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, can people? Well, what will, what will happen? Now, there is, they still have the canoe and the we kayak. We still have right? that. We we've got so much more this year. We've got a great site we've been using for a number of years in Scranton. We just developed it uh, four years ago. We we had our first uh, finish line event there. It's called Sweeney's Beach, mm -hmm. and it's off Poplar Street. Uh, right along the uh, Lackawanna River in the Pinebrook neighborhood of Scranton. So if you can find uh, Scranton Prep and Bernie Honda, that's Poplar Street, follow it down to the river. Before you cross the river, if you, if you cross the river, you're, you're over at the Scranton Public Works garage. It's on the east side of the river, right at the river bank. You turn left off of Poplar Street and it's a gravel driveway. We have got a big parking area that the neighboring business lets us use. And uh, we've got, it's a, an old piece of city owned property that was basically cut off. There used to be a railroad where the driveway is and the drive, the rails were removed so the driveway it could be installed for Lackawanna College to get to a property for their practice fields. And when they did that, that opened up this property that the city had that nobody could get to before because of the railroad tracks. And it was a, it was a, 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 a hobo jungle. It was homeless camps. It was, we pulled out 20 big dumpsters of trash from the site. <laughs> then we got some grants. We graded it all out. We got rid of the knotweed for the most part, and we're still fighting that. It's an invasive plant, the Japanese bamboo, they call it. The railroad and, bridge was removed two several years ago across toward Providence Road. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah that bridge was removed for the flood yes, control. So correct. the railroad, so yeah, this the railroad, is where the railroad the river was abandoned. Is centered then? Yeah, but, so uh, we've, got, we've got six acres there, and we've got a big lawn. So we've got tents set up, we've got uh, vendors, we've got craft vendors, we've got food vendors. And this year, uh, uh, Paul Bechtel, who's uh, our vice president, and he, he's the chair of the event this year, he's, he's, he's a father of two young boys, so uh, a six and an eight year old uh, young fellow. So he's really focused, as a lot of his peers are, on raising kids and they've got, so they've got a whole bunch of kid-centered activities oh, this year. So great. we're gonna have, we're gonna have science in, in, in environment called uh, 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 an area where the kids can learn about the habitat. Uh, one of our other directors uh, uh, works for a, a, a 
distributing company. She's bringing some cardboard. We're going to have a cardboard slide down the hill. <laughs> um, we're going to have the kids get up. Uh, we're going to be planting uh, vegetation along the river. So it's, it's a real hands-on uh, opportunity for fun for kids and families this year. That sounds like the slide they do at the Little League World Series. Yeah, we're yes, yes, it'll that's be similar right. to that. That's yeah. like, that's that's right. like yeah. other than the games, that's the highlight. It of is, that. down oh. that one embankment. Uh -huh. It that's is. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. And so you've got a you've got a bank there you can you can slide on. Yeah, yeah, we do. And uh, there's there's music and we've got we've got beverages. Uh, LT for Astros uh, uh, coming up with uh, with some uh, nice beverages and we'll have an area for the adults too, so they can just look over the fence and make sure the kids are okay. You got bands there or what? Um, we got uh, we have uh, D DJ J uh, Jack is there this year and uh, he's going to open up the his mic. Uh, we're expecting people to. Uh, Bring guitars and uh, just sort of we're, we're going to have some river jam band uh, going on. So you don't uh, have to be a, a, a kayak or a canoer to enjoy this event. Then. No, no. And we've got uh, we've got regatta, and so if people want to get dressed up and decorate their boat. We're going to give out prizes for for, for funny costumes and and uh, imaginative decorations, and that'll be kicking off about three o'clock. And not to not to forget. We've got uh, probably, I think, the world's best duck race, uh, the Lackawanna River Duckathon, <laughs> and uh, we've got we've got uh, uh, ten big racing ducks, and they're trained. They've been they've been racing in the Lackawanna River for about 20 years now, and you could you could buy a duck ticket, and uh, the winner uh, could take home uh, 500 uh, 500 dollars <laughs> is the first prize. And it's, that's U.S. currency, Yankee dollars. You can spend them anywhere. <laughs> the I hear they're in great demand all over the world, so you can have a lot of fun. Bet on the, come on down, buy a duck oh, ticket. you have these giant inflatable ducks? No, they're just regular they're sized right. ducks. But they uh, float, yeah. They float. Yeah. And, and how long do you... Do they you were run? made in Ohio. They're Ohio they weren't ducks. made overseas. They're plastic, but they were made in the United good, States. That's good. And, and how far do you, do you run they, these? They, they race about 100 yards, yeah. And, uh, and what's the date on the event again? Saturday, May the 11th. The 11th. Yeah. That's, that's near, I think, Kentucky Derby runs first. Yeah, well, that's right. Sure. So this yeah. The next biggest race <laughs> in the, the Kentucky Derby. Derby. Yeah, after, after the Derby, <laughs> af after, your, after your horse comes in first in the Derby, you, you want to see your duck come in and first. That's the Belmont and everything yeah. comes after that. You're yeah, right. that's yeah, yeah two, they have Bernie. to wait. They have to wait for our, our <laughs> yeah. now, that, now that brings up, that, that, uh, that brings up, comment brings up a thought in my mind. Because you get a, a good response to the River Fest. A lot of people come down there, whether it is to participate on the river or to enjoy the vendors and, and enjoy the music and such. Mm -hmm. Two days later, those you know, the River Fest is over. Are people using the river? Oh, yeah, all the time. Um, people are using Sweeney's Beach a lot more, too. And uh, there's sites like that. There's, there's more borough parks that have been created along the river. Uh, we, we work with our main partner, uh, the Lackawanna Heritage Valley Authority to create They've the got Heritage the Trail, trail right? and yeah. that's being used. The half marathon was just run run on part of the trail okay. here in Scranton. Uh, we have the DNH Distance Run. We we partner with the uh, Rail Trail Council of Northeast Pennsylvania in the Upper Watershed. Uh, we w through the through the Rail Trail Council, we've acquired the Upper uh, Delaware and Hudson, the old Delaware and Hudson Main Line, up over Mount Ararat and up into New York State, and that goes that actually helps us protect. The whole uh, uh, 15 miles of the Upper Lackawanna watershed above Carbondale, because our partner, the Rail Trail Council, owns that old railroad embankment, oh. and um, we've just made some huge improvements up there. We we partnered with uh, uh, with the uh, 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 UGI, the gas utility. They needed to run a pipeline. They they had an easement when we acquired the railroad 20 some years ago. Uh, we had worked with UGI because they had a pipeline in there. Uh, on the old railroad bed, and they actually had a right to put another pipe in. So they came to Rail Trail Council a couple years ago and said, hey, we need to put another pipe in uh, to service the, the, uh, the turbine plant yeah. up in Jessup. So um, they needed that extra capacity. So they said, well, we said, well, we, ha we have a, a trail that we ma we built there. Uh, so they said, well, we'll re rebuild the trail. And gosh darn, oh. they, they have spent another year after they installed the pipeline to make sure that that trail was brand new, to met off specifications, and not only that, they, they restored all of the original railroad drainage. So I really, really want to give a big shout out and a thanks to uh, Tony Varmar and his colleagues at UGI and, for all the great work they've Lindy done. And Scott Lindy and the and, Lindy Corporation. And Lindy, Lindy was the contractor. Yep. Scott Lindy, And uh, the, everybody pulled together up there. They did a great job. So it, it shows the kind of partnerships that we build, because we're not, we're not against something. 
we're for something. So we bring people together and we create a consensus and we create coalitions to move projects forward. And um, so. Yeah, and while I think of you as a, <clears throat> an organization that really is, is supportive of improving the water quality in our river mm -hmm. and our streams, yeah. by the same token, these trails that, uh, that mm -hmm. don't always necessarily run alongside a stream or a, mm -hmm. or a river are so valuable yeah. to our area recreationally. People are looking for things. There are more and more runs now. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. Bicycling has become big again, mm -hmm. uh, yep. where there are just trails you can use, but mm -hmm. then there are also events. Mm -hmm. And I get, you know, the more events you have, a river or trail involved, Mm -hmm. The more people will understand what we have here, mm -hmm. why it's important to maintain it, and, yeah. and how we can expand on what we have. Yeah, exactly right, Dave. We have more eyes and ears and noses and feet and, and along the river now, uh, and on the river, paddling, fishing, running, jogging, bicycling, uh, just out for a walk to, uh, to look at the, uh, at the wildlife and the habitat. Uh, so you can't get away with trying to pollute the Lackawanna River anymore. We get phone calls if somebody's doing something, even if it's sort of legal and, and uh, you know, somebody doesn't know what it is, but it looks bad, we get a phone call about it and we're out investigating or we get DEP out. And, and uh, so things get taken care of pretty quickly. And, and that's, uh, you know, and we're, we're starting to look at all of our tributary streams as well. Uh, we're looking at uh, some new planning initiatives uh, along the Roaring Brook uh, uh, corridor up into the North Pocono area. We've got a great trail group that's a partner up there, North Pocono uh, uh, Trails Association. Uh, Lackawanna County has that old the Erie and Wyoming Valley Railroad, and uh, that's going to get redeveloped with the PennDOT's actually going to rebuild the trestle at Silver Lake underneath the twin 380 interstate bridges when they get rebuilt in the next few years. Uh, so we're looking at initiatives up our major tributary streams and uh, uh, we're also looking at uh, uh, partnering with the uh, Countryside Conservancy and some folks in the Abingtons to try to figure out how can we get a trail through the notch to get people to be able to walk or bicycle from Scranton up into the Abingtons. And some of and that, uh, that right away still exists if you look down there, the old yep. Trolley line, yeah, still parts exists. of it, yeah, yeah, still no, exists. yeah. Uh, countryside's yes, done it. Countryside's doing a great job north of uh, north of uh, Clark Summit, but uh, uh, south uh, uh, and over towards uh, Scranton through the notch, yeah, it's going to be a real challenge. It's going to be a real challenge. Yeah, yeah, limited so, uh, yeah. limited yeah. geography to work we're, with. We're there, so I guess. lucky to live in this railroad area to take you know the Ontario mm -hmm. and western and central of New Jersey and DNH, yeah. which would have been land. Abandoned mm -hmm. and probably sure. bulldozed yeah. and make these trails which is so immensely popular. Yeah, and, and the popularity of these recreational resources that we're building along our river that's a lot cleaner than it was, it's really now a critical part of our business infrastructure. It makes somebody coming in to think about locating a business here, it gives them some opportunities to say, hey, these people care. They have a group that's caring about the river. They have a group that's building trails. Uh, they, uh, they have a really active uh, uh, population. All the younger people are involved in all these outdoor activities. Uh, so it, it makes the area a, a lot more attractive for business investors, for anybody that wants to come up here. And, and uh, it's, it's a great uh, family-friendly community. And I, I think these resources are being developed now to the point where some they're a major portion, major part of our, uh, of our economic development vision looking into the future. Some of our assets we, we don't realize the treasures that we have, and I mean, we're talking Lackawanna County, but let me switch to Luzerne for just a second. Where I, I live in Luzerne. Mm -hmm. I'm not far from a very small stream there. Never even gave it a second thought. I see it running and gets high. I get worried sometimes. I saw a guy with a fishing rod. So what, what, what's in there? They don't stock this, or they said no. He said there's native trout in here. Mm -hmm. I, I had no idea. Yeah. Uh, so I'm sure up in Lackawanna County we have some similar situations. Oh, yeah. Streams yeah. that are mm -hmm. in fair condition maybe can be improved even more, sure. mm -hmm. and again become a real asset to the area. And we have to remember the most important motto of this whole deal: we all live downstream. Yeah. Yeah. Of that's somebody. True. Right. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. that, that's, yeah. that's very true. Yeah, we all have a responsibility to our neighbors, yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, time's running out, so once again, let's do a quick recap on Riverfest, date, time. Yeah, Riverfest is is Saturday, May 11th, and it includes uh, the, the Canoe-a-thon, which is a canoe and kayak race, and, and folks can visit the 
LRCA website, which is www.lrca.org. Uh, they can visit our Facebook page, and there will be links on our site and the Facebook page for registering for the canoe race or the kayak race, uh, buying duck tickets. Uh, uh, there'll be a schedule of activities at the finish line. I don't think we've had the, the exact schedule uh, up uh, uh, on the site yet, uh, but there'll be uh, directions on how to get to. The finish line is at Sweeney's Beach, as I said, in Scranton. We have our launching points in the morning for uh, the, uh, uh, the, the uh, whitewater run in the river. Uh, our upper launch point is uh, at uh, Maslar Park in Archibald. That's off Laurel Street in the borough of Archibald. And then our main launch point is the, uh, Dick, uh, is the uh, Bl Blakely Borough Recreation Park uh, right on uh, uh, Riverside, uh, River Street in uh, Keystone Avenue in Peckville. And um, that's where we launch most folks. And it's a great, uh, from Archibald, it's a 12-mile paddle down to Scranton. From Blakely, it's an 8-mile paddle. Uh, we've got some serious white water, so if the river's up like it is uh, with the storm last night here today, it came up to about five feet on the Archibald Gauge. It's a little higher than we'd like uh, for our event. But uh, there's some great paddling on the Lackawanna River uh, pretty much all year round, as long as, as well as some great fishing uh, on the sure. river all year and, round. And, so. and River Fest, as far as uh, spectators as opposed mm -hmm. to those that are actually involved, it yeah. totally it's free. Oh, it's free. Yeah, it's absolutely free. Okay. Uh, you can, can just, if, you, if you're just uh, out and about Saturday uh, morning and you find yourself along the river and you see a bunch of people uh, looking out at the river, they're, they're watching some of the boats go by, so you can stop and just check it out. Uh, we'd love to have everybody come down and uh, buy a duck ticket on site uh, and uh, join us for the uh, festivities. We'll be, uh, we'll be enjoying the river all afternoon, uh, actually, the the, the uh, uh, finish line activities begin at 11 a.m. Uh, so from 11 a.m. on till about uh, four or five in the afternoon, uh, we'll have uh, stuff going on at Sweeney's Beach. Sounds like a Good luck, great, great activity. Yeah, thanks, thanks, guys. Bernie. Yeah, enjoy having you back to talk about this great event. Anytime, Dave. And thank, thank you, you very much, Rusty. Thanks, Dave. And Mark, thank you, Mark. Larry, thanks for keeping mm -hmm. us in focus. I'm David DeCosmo for ECTV Live. Until we see you again next week, here's hoping all your news is good.